Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Eric with the band Shallow Side, and you're watching SoundLink TV. Trenton here with SoundLink TV with Eric of the band Shallow Side. We are here. We are here. We are here. Yeah, I just got off stage. I'm I'm tired. Already. Yeah, yeah. You guys, you guys, you guys killed it as always. So, you know, we we've, we've you know run in your circle a few few times already. Yeah. Seen you guys grow from like a small little band from Alabama to like you know band in a bus. Now I don't think we've ever done a video with you guys before. So I mean, but yeah, we, you know we've seen you guys come up from a small van to the to the bandwagon. Yeah. Now you guys are on a big bus. So yeah. like band in the bus. Yeah. So <laughs> what's what's this been like? You know, getting finally getting into I guess the big boy level. Uh, man, actually, uh, it's it's been hell. If, if I could be like completely honest. Yeah, yeah be as honest as you want. Yeah. It's been hell. Um, it's a very difficult thing to do, to pick up everything that you've ever known, shove it inside of a backpack and take off running. Especially because nine times out of ten, uh, the, the reaction that you're typically going to get is going to be uh, negative. You're going to be like, what are you doing? They, because like, you know, normal people don't live this lifestyle. Uh, a circus life is not for everyone. And um, not everyone can be a clown, you know, in the circus. So uh, it's a it's a difficult life to be a part of. And this year, in particular, um, we were at the first quarter of our tour. We were out on tour with a, a cool band from uh, <clears throat> friends of ours in Texas, a band called Messer. And uh, we had our bus break down, and it broke down again, and then it broke down again. And we were we. We've been a band for uh, since 2010, and and we work hard, we strive hard, and we we uh, we're, we're smart business wise as can as we can be. You know, we got you know public education from Alabama, roll tide, <laughs> but uh, we we do the best that we can uh, to make everything work the way that we think that it should. And the whole first quarter of this year um, sunk 100% of those savings over the past nearly a decade. The first quarter of this year sunk every bit of those savings. And um, we were kind of at our wits' end, and uh, it, it was it was a difficult process. But um, we we weaseled our way. We we uh, we got to the right spots, and we've we've done the right things along the way. We've been honest people, and, and uh, we we came up with the, with the bus that we're in now, and uh, continuing to tour. So yeah. that that's 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 been the shot. It's been difficult, but. Um, I, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Now honestly. for now for a difficult, you know, journey and stuff. You know, if you, anybody goes to your merch table, they'll see like I, I don't even know how many CDs sitting there, including a vinyl now and stuff. Yeah. So within eight years, you guys have put out like a few EPs, we, some records. I mean, so right, like well, well, so we put out um we put out three EPs, a uh, and then a collage of all three of those EPs on a vinyl, and we also put it uh, together in a in a CD as well. But um, we are we're we've funded all of that stuff by ourselves and then we've turned around and uh now now we're diving into uh a debut album that's what we're shooting for now so eight, eight years later a debut yeah, eight, album eight, there debut you go album, eight years later man eight years it's never later. it's never too late <laughs> can we call it that eight years later that's a good name there you go yeah i, th I think we just named your album eight years later Happened. yeah there we go here first. yeah yeah <laughs> if we if we do that we got we can talk royalties afterwards and all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, dude, you know, you, so you guys have been grinding hard, you know, not just touring, but with the music and stuff, you know, building a name for yourself. She had a rebel go on the radio and everything. And, yeah. and so, you know, you guys have been growing and stuff. So you say you're, y'all are trying to release your debut album now and everything. And so, you know, after that, you know, where are you guys trying to go after that? Uh, we, um, to continue to play in the arenas. Here's something really cool. Um, so eight years ago, we started our band. Uh, you can, you can easily say six years ago the band quote unquote you know took off we were able to start touring we started to fly you know so to speak we um we, we started to learn the ins and outs and, and how to create a business and, and become a, a tangible force in the entertainment industry even on a small side in the club level and uh this year in 2018 um i, I woke up in january and uh and i and i have uh my my child, my I had a daughter. Oh, congratulations! Uh, thank you so much. Um, in January, and it was around the first of January. I remember waking up, and I was like, "I'm going to be playing in arenas this year. I'm doing it. I, I don't care what it takes, and I'm doing it." 
and uh, we got a phone call about a month ago to be on this tour that we're on right now that I just got off the stage that's why I'm all winded you guys killed it you guys killed it thank you so much Um, but it's with uh, you know puddle of mud and saliva um, tantric we've played with uh, soil Um, the Veer unions on here now Uh, we've we uh, broken testimony label mates and they opened up right they uh, broken testimony opened up which those guys are they're just cutting their teeth in the whole game which is it's a beautiful thing to see Uh, so like we we're we're just like we're blessed to be here and uh the reason i said all that was because like where where are we going it literally just depends on what we want you know right now right now i want a full-length album and i want to define the sound that is shallow side and and define the the sound that is uh, uh myself and that's me speaking for myself but i can speak for the rest of the guys individually they want to find what it is that defines themselves as a uh, as an artist as a musician and um we uh the, the sky's the limit man we can literally do anything we want to do in in the entire world because we've competed at all levels yeah all levels sound wise too you guys are very diverse like you could put out a full-blown country song if you wanted to and it sound just as good you know what <laughs> i mean like you guys could go that way if you really wanted to or you could go super heavy because you guys have some songs and you have a couple breakdowns on it so i mean that's you guys are so you guys are very versatile and so i guess i guess you're trying to blend all that stuff together to get like that one sound on that's that true. one album to just like put out there and be like okay this is what we're finally doing yeah so uh, speaking speaking of country um who Who's the who's the the dude that did Body Like a Back Road? Who's that guy? I, I have no idea. <laughs> I know the song, but I don't think I know who did that. Uh, jeez, what's his name? <laughs> anyway, um, I was watching an interview of a, uh, a another country singer, and um, he was a, a type of singer songwriter guy that would mesh a bunch of different fills and different vibes all together, and he put it perfectly. And and this is this is like relatable for you for uh, for me for anyone our age and most of the people that are probably watching this on on all platforms that it's going to come out on. Uh, we didn't grow up listening to full length albums. Yeah. We grew up stealing songs off of Napster. Like let's be honest, LimeWire was porn <laughs> and music. That's all we did as as teenage boys. It didn't matter what the genre was, dude. Like, I listened to country just as much as I did hip-hop, just as much as I did pop. I had three older sisters, so, like, you best believe I got my pop skills down. And sing better than Backstreet Boys. Uh, Let's fight about it later. Or in LFP Dixie. Okay. Okay. Hell yeah. All right. I'm a big Timberlake fan. But then, and obviously, rock and roll, classic rock, all the sub-genres that go with everything, I would listen to what I found next. And then that's how I discovered it. I didn't discover albums the same way that everyone was uh, discovering albums generations before us. Yeah. So when we started creating music, the music started creating uh, us in, into into more of, of who we were. And it started to define a lot more of our personalities, more than we could define what we were doing. So so I, I think that's where a lot of these like sub, sub-genres are, are like coming out of the woodworks and like doing a lot of stuff. It's because music is, is an international language and we're all just trying to figure out how to speak it together. Yeah. And I guess, I guess that moment for you after arenas is going to maybe a country where English isn't a language but they're singing your words. Europe is on the is on the map. Well, they 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 do speak English there, but more so maybe like uh, well, we're from Alabama, so like even our <laughs> English is not English. <laughs> so yeah, I, I did hear this one time, and I actually really agree. The Southern accent is the closest thing to a British accent that there is in America. Is that true? I, I've heard that, and if you listen to it, you can kind of hear it. Well, I'll be damned. Well, I'll be damned. Well, I'll be dumb. <laughs> get out! Get out! I mean, it's. I guess, I, I, I guess it's kind of. It's uh, probably not a real. Sorry, British people watching. I, I butchered that, but. They hate you now. Yeah, but but yeah, but it's like the I closest. I make fun of y'all. I'm still coming over there, <laughs> even if I do make fun. Yeah, of it's you. just something I heard more thought about and listened. I was like, yeah, they, they might be onto something here. So. But yep. So you might have be closer to the British and speaking than maybe some Harvard graduate up north or something maybe, like that. Maybe. Maybe that's maybe. that's reassuring. That's yeah, reassuring. <laughs> All right, that's a full-length album, trying to get on arenas and stuff. Uh, what can you promote right now? What music do you have out, and uh, what do you want people to go listen to? Uh, I would say if, if you're just now discovering who we are, um, thanks for 
checking us out. Thank you for letting us be a part of this. Yeah, uh, no problem. Shallow Side. The easiest way to find us is shallowside.net. Our first EP, if you've never heard it before, go and pick that up. It's called Home Today. Start there. You're, you're going to love it. You will love it. <laughs> we created it. Um, you're going to see kind of where we started and where we came from. And then you're going to watch that evolve into the next CD that is a stand-up, uh, another five-song EP, and then that how that evolves into one, which is our third EP. And then... Uh, and then just be, be in, in preparation, be a part of us, our social medias as we um, begin the writing cycle for what will be Shallow Side's uh, first debut album. Possibly called Eight Years, right? Eight Years Later? Eight Possib Years Later. Possibly Poss called that. Uh, it's, it's in the bag. It's in the bag. It's in the yes. Bag. Yes. Wait, that sounds like another good name, though. It's eight Years Later, dot, it's dot, dot. It's in, <laughs> it's in the bag. There you go. All right, well, thanks for your time today. And uh, you guys killed it. And looking Thank forward to seeing so uh, you guys in arenas one day at the next yeah. level. I'm Trent with Selling TV with Eric from Shallow Site. Thanks for watching.